Well, I've been uh, sort of tongue-in-cheek saying for some weeks now that I might consider converting to Catholicism, uh, having been raised a Methodist. And uh, because this Pope, Pope Francis, keeps saying these extraordinary things, the, this was not widely reported. I read it in the Financial Times day before yesterday, and I came back. I was on a flight back from, from um, Seattle Monday and picked up the Financial Times at the Denver airport where I was changing planes and, and uh, read this article on the plane. And then when I got back here, I thought, uh, you know, uh, maybe I can find this in the New York Times. I searched the New York Times, couldn't find it, couldn't find it in the Washington Post, couldn't find it pretty much anywhere else. These quotes... Uh, other than the Financial Times, but the Pope was speaking in a little mining town in Sardinia, one of the poorest regions of Italy, and the uh, miners were chanting, work, 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 and the Pope said, where there is no work, there is no dignity. It is not a problem of Italy and Europe. It is the consequence of a world choice of an economic system that brings about this tragedy. An economic center that has a system that has at its center an idol, which is called money. He said we have a widespread preoccupation with profits, and today's throwaway culture enslaves the hearts and minds of us all. Greed, the Pope said, is a sin against the first commandment. One cannot worship God and money. Here is why. Money becomes idolatry, and Jesus tells us that you cannot serve money and God. It must be one or the other. It's been a long time since we've heard a pope talk like this, and uh, we had some speculation yesterday, one of our callers, about his being a Jesuit. That might influence it or whatever, but I just I wanted to get Bill Donahue on. He's the president and CEO of the Catholic League for Religious and Civil Rights. CatholicLeague.org is the website. And Bill has traditionally been associated with or affiliated as or identified as a, a conservative and, uh, uh, and, and certainly on issues like abortion and gay rights. I'm, I'm sure Bill still holds that position. But, uh, Bill, welcome to the program, or welcome back to the program. How are you doing, Tom? I'm fine. I'm curious your take on this Pope's basically condemning capitalism and promoting things like um, worker-owned co-ops and and uh, I mean he came right out a couple weeks ago and said that rich people that that nobody basically should have over a billion dollars that rich people are the problem. Well, look, the the Catholic Church has always been opposed to socialism and it's always been opposed to unfettered capitalism, the kind of licentious capitalism. Uh, that some people seem to like, the kind of laissez-faire without any kind of regulations whatsoever, that's been consistent for a long time. When he talks about the throwaway culture last Friday on September the 20th, he said he condemned abortion as part of the throwaway culture. I understand. So, yeah. uh, in I fact, he recently asked excommun- me... Workers and rights, uh, rights of workers, the Catholic Church has long championed that, going back at least until 1891 with uh, a, an encyclical Rerum Novarum. So would you say that conservative Catholic Catholics in the United States who call themselves politically conservative, let's, right. um, you know, we, we acknowledge your position on abortion, birth control, you know, the role of women, those, those uh, gays, those social issues. Let's set that aside for a minute and talk economic issues. You said the church has always been opposed to socialism. What are you calling socialism? Well, exactly what the term means, the state ownership of the means of production. Okay, so you're using Marx's term as, yeah, opposed, right to, as opposed to Norway's term, because Norway calls itself a socialist country, and yet the state does not own the means of production or manufacture. The, the, the proper term for the Scandinavian countries, and I'm not being, being snappy here, is democratic uh, the proper socialism. term would be welfare state. Well, or democratic, to, they call themselves democratic socialists. Well, I'm sure that they do, but uh, in socialism strictly defined, and yeah, Marx would be like the, the guru there, uh, is the state ownership. For example, in Pennsylvania, uh, they will lock you up if you try to open up your own liquor store. All right, because it's the state run. It's in, in the socialist, which whenever, yeah. whenever you have socialism, Same in New you have no dissent and things of that nature, so they won't tolerate uh, a market uh, a choice for people. That's an example of, of socialism. Social security and welfare are examples of 
uh, of a welfare state. And yet the it's Catholic not, Church no, in, in most of Europe, for most of its history, controlled the means of production and manufacture. They did until it crashed and Margaret Thatcher had to uh, devolve into a privatized system. That's true. Well, no, I'm talking about like from 1200 or maybe 800 until... Um, until the Enlightenment. I basically. would think that's more mercantilist, Tom, where you had the, you had, uh, the throne working with uh, a kind of a crony capitalist, uh, not real capitalism, where you might have some kind of a market economy right. Um, right. as such. But, uh, no, I mean, if, if, you, if, you, if the state runs uh, the Amtrak, for example, that's an example of socialism, where the state owns the railroad uh, as such. Uh, but if it's a matter of... Uh, uh, a welfare state, that's, that's a different Well, situation. if the state owns the, owns the highways, both... owns and maintains the highways, is that socialism? Um, I don't, you, I suppose you could say that since... I mean, where does the commons begin and end? Private roads, though, you see. Uh, like David Geffen, for example, says no one's allowed on his beach to go across his beach to get to a public beach. That would be an example there of a private property exercise trying to keep the poor... Uh, away from uh, his property, so that he right. doesn't see them walking to the public beach. Right, but you you see your point. I, I the quite, but the point of my question was, how do we define where the commons begins and ends? If we agree that the purpose of government in a non-communist or socialist state, to use your word, um, is to protect the commons, those things that most appropriately are held in trust by all of us and to protect the right of private citizens and private capital to engage in manufacture and commerce and transportation and, and uh, sale and distribution and th those kind of things, then where do we draw the line? Do we draw the line, uh, you know, you, you said Amtrak is socialism. I would say Amtrak is an extension of roads. It's transportation. And, and it, you know, it could be privatized or not. It would be the decision of the people. But if it's not privatized, I don't see that as socialism. Um, well, yeah, I mean, listen, I, I think that uh, we live in, in most, most of the West. There's a large public sector and there's a large private sector. Right. So the question is, do you tilt one way or the other? I mean, right. do where, do, where do you draw those care, lines? Do you like more so, of a, so, a competition? So here's depends the, here, on which one do you want to emphasize. Yeah, I, I, I agree. And, here, and um, pardon me for moving this along, but we're going to get hit by a break here in about a minute. So I'm, <laughs> I just, you know. Um, so as a, as a Catholic who uh, agrees... I believe. Do you agree with the Pope on these statements? I do, but you see that I guess the difference. So, how, so what happens when you say that to Bill O'Reilly and his head explodes? I, I see people who run governments in in a socialist model as being some of the greediest people I've ever seen. For example, we know that the Somasistas uh, in Nicaragua were example of crony capitalists who exploited the people. They were replaced by the Sandinistas who were also exploiting the people living in the same palaces as the Soma Cistas, sometimes you, you're just talking about rotten guys on both sides. Well, I don't disagree with that, but the, the, the question is, if the Pope says you, you know, money becomes idolatry, you cannot serve both money and God, it must be one well, or the I other. I agree with that. Greed is a sin against the First Commandment, and yet Bill O'Reilly or, or uh, you know, perhaps uh, the guy who does the libertarian rants on Fox would say, without greed you don't have capitalism, you don't have a functioning economic system. Well, you see, that's where I would be more with you, probably, and that is to say, while I believe, maybe strong, a little stronger than you, in a market economy, I do think that the single-minded pursuit of profit uh, is, is simply uh, wrong and, and ultimately unchristian. Wow. I'm impressed. Um, Bill Donahue, I, I applaud you for your Catholic consistency, and thanks for, for sharing your perspective with us. Well, thank you for being so honest, too. Uh, my pleasure. CatholicLeague.org. Bill Donahue's website. He's the president and CEO of the Catholic League for Religious and Civil Rights. We'll be right back.